The first time I encountered the figure of Mike Hawthorne happened while reading a book written by the Italian Luca Delli Carri and named Gli Indisciplinati. A better translation of the title could be The Unruly. Years later appeared on screen a very nice movie documentary named Ferrari Race to Immortality. It's the same story. What was the leftover of the Ferrari team after Juan Manuel Fangio won the world title in 1956 and immediately after left the prancing horse team to go to race for Maserati. At Ferrari, il commendatore Enzo Ferrari, the Drake, decided it was time to leave all the young roosters to fight each other for the final win. So we had five young drivers, Eugenio Castellotti, Alfonso De Portago, Luigi Musso, Peter Collins and Mike Hawthorne battling around the world to win the title with Ferrari team. Mike was born the 10th of April 1929 and died today, the 22nd of January 1959. He was a British racing driver. He became the United Kingdom's first Formula One world champion in 1958, whereupon he announced his retirement, having been profoundly affected by the death of his teammate and friend Peter Collins two months earlier in the 58th German Grand Prix at the Nürburgring. Author also won the 1955-24 Hours of Le Mans, but was haunted by his involvement in the disastrous crash that married the race. Years later, Hawthorne died in a road accident three months after retiring. If uh, we should look just at statistics, for some people Mike Hawthorne does not deserve the place within the best drivers of Formula One ever existed. He raced a few years from 1952 up to 1958 for the best teams available back then. Ferrari, Van Wall, BRM and non-works Cooper and Maserati. 47 entries for 45 starts, one championship in 1958, three wins, 18 podiums, four pole position and six fastest lap. It's true also that back then every season of Formula One was composed more or less by six, seven, eight races, not more like today. He was born in Maxborough, West Riding of Yorkshire, England, and educated at the Ardingley College, West Sussex, following then technical studies at the Chelsea College, and then was an apprentice with a commercial vehicle manufacturer. His father owned the tourist trophy garage in Farnham, franchised to supply and service several high performances brands, including Jaguars and Ferraris. His father also raced motorcycles and supported his son's racing career and when he died in a road accident in 1954 Mike Hawthorne inherited the business. Mike Hawthorne made his competition debut on the 2nd of September 1954 at the age of 21 in his 1934 Riley Ulster winning the 1.1 liter sports class at the Brighton Speed Trials. The year later in 1951 Driving another Riley 1.5 liter, he entered the Motorsport Brooklands Memorial Trophy, a season-long contest run at Goodwood, winning it by one point. In the same year, he also won the Ulster Trophy Handicap at Dundrod and the Leinster Trophy at Wicklow. Back then, names and races very important in the British environment regarding motorsport. We arrived to 1952 where Hawthorne had switched to single-seaters and during that season won his first race in a Formula 2 Cooper Bristol T20 at Goodwood. Further successes followed, which brought him to the attention of Enzo Ferrari, who offered him a works drive. He made his Formula 1 debut at the 1952 Grand Prix of Belgium on the legendary circuit the Spa-Francorchamps, finishing in fourth place. By the end of the season, he already secured his first podium 
with a third place at the REC British Grand Prix and a brace of fourths driving a Cooper. We arrive at 1953. He's a formal official Ferrari driver. Author immediately showed his worth with victory at his ninth attempt in the French Grand Prix at Reims, outmaneuvering Juan Manuel Fangio in what became dubbed the race of the century, with the top four drivers finishing within five seconds of each other after 60 laps. This and two other podium finishes helped him end the season fourth overall. He also won the BRDC International Trophy and the Ulster Trophy, as well as the 24 hours of Spa-Francorchamps with Ferrari and teammate Giuseppe Farina, the first Formula One driver's world champion in 1950. In 1954, in a crash during the Gran Premio di Siracusa, Othorn suffered serious burns, but finished the year with three seconds and the victory in the season finale in Spain, placing him third in the Drivers' Championship. Following the death of his father, Othorn left Ferrari to race for Tony van der Velde, Van Wall's team, because he needed to spend more time at the family garage he had inherited but after two races, returned to Ferrari. In January 1955, the year after, Mike joined the Jaguar racing team, replacing Sterling Moss, who had left for Mercedes. Author won the 1955-24 hours of Le Mans, following what has been described as an inspired drive, in which he set a lap record of 4 minutes and 6 seconds during a 3-hour duel with Fangio in the early stages. However, the race was married by the worst disaster in motor racing history, a crash which killed 83 spectators and Mercedes driver Pierre Levesque. After overtaking Lance Macklin Healey, Hawthorne suddenly broke in front of him on noticing an order to enter the pits to refuel, causing Macklin to swerve into the path of Levesque's Mercedes. After colliding with the Healey, the Mercedes skipped the earthen embankment separating the spectator area from the track, bounced through spectators' enclosures, then hit a concrete stairwell parapet head-on, and the impact shattered the front end of the car, which then somersaulted high, pitching the breeze into the spectator area, before landing atop the earthen embankment. The debris, including bonnet, engine and front axle, which separated from the frame, flew through the crowd. Eight hours later, while leading the race one lap and half ahead of the Jaguar team, the Mercedes team withdrew from the race, ostensibly as a mark of respect for those who had perished in the accident. The Jaguar team was invited to join them but declined. The French press carried photographs of Hawthorne and Ivo Bube, celebrating their win with the customary champagne but treated them with scorn. The official inquiry into the accident ruled that Hawthorne was not responsible for the crash and that it was merely a racing incident. At the end, the death of so many spectators was blamed on inadequate safety standards for track design. At the end, the layout and the design of Le Mans was still the same like it was in 1923, when the top speed of a race car was around the region of 100 km per hour, 60 miles per hour. By 1955, top speeds for the leading cars were over 270 km per hour, 170 miles per hour. The death toll led to a ban on motorsports in France, Spain, Switzerland, Germany and other nations, until the tracks could be brought to a higher safety standard. In Switzerland, nowadays, Motorsports are still banned, with some exceptions. We arrive to season 1956, another change of team for Mike, this time with the BRM. It was a failure campaign, and the only podium scored by Hawthorne was the third place in Argentina, just because BRM team was not there, and he was allowed by the team to run as a privateer on a Maserati 250F. It was time to go back to sports car and racing in Italy a Jaguar D-Type, Hawthorne crashed and suffered very serious burns, his second bad accident of the year, leaving him disillusioned with racing. 
However, he believed that a return to Ferrari could give him the championship in the superior Lancia Ferrari D50, designed by Italian engineer Jano. Unluckily, the 57 version was even slower than the 56 version, driven by Fangio and Collins, all conquering the previous year. But at least the only positive side of that 1957 was that very soon Mike became friend with Peter Collins, a fellow Englishman and Ferrari team driver. During the 57 and 58 racing seasons, the two Englishmen became engaged in a fierce rivalry with Luigi Musso, another Ferrari driver, for prize money. Peter and Mike decided to share the total amount earned after each race. Luigi Musso, that had serious troubles with his finances, was not happy about the idea that maybe sometimes the two Englishmen were racing also against him. Nobody knows the truth, and nobody can tell if this particular aspect at the end did lead to the end also of Luigi Musso's life. Hawthorne won the 1958 Formula One championship despite achieving only one win against four by Sterling Moss. Hawthorne won the 1958 French Grand Prix at Reims, race in which Musso was fatally injured while in second place. The win came exactly five years after the first win of Hawthorne in Formula One in 1953, still for the French Grand Prix at Reims. Mike was easily leading the 1958 Monaco Grand Prix. At half distance, his engine blew. While at Monza, he was a minute ahead of Tony Brooks' Van Wall when his clutch forced him to slow down to second place. Author had a benefit from the gentleman Sir Sterling Moss, as demonstrated at the 1958 Portuguese Grand Prix at Porto. Author was disqualified for bump starting his stalled car downhill in the opposite direction, on the way to a second place finish. Moss interceded on Hawthorne's behalf and the decision was ultimately reversed. After a pit stop midway through the race, Hawthorne accelerated back through the field to gain an extra point for fastest lap. Moss had failed to respond, possibly doubting Hawthorne could lap so fast with damaged drum brakes. This extra world championship point plus the second place points contributed to Hawthorne winning the championship with a season total just one more than that of Sterling Moss. In the final race, the 1958 Moroccan Grand Prix, Hawthorne drove a conservative tactical race, aiming to stay ahead of Mons Van Wall teammates. Brooks' car broke while narrowly leading Hawthorne, and Stuart Lewis Evans in the third Van Wall crashed after a desperate attempt to move through the fields and challenge Hawthorne running third. Evans later, unluckily, died of burns. In the last laps, second place Phil Hill, future 1961 world champion with Ferrari, slowed and waved Hawthorne through to gain enough points to take the championship, the first ever to be won by an English driver. After winning the title, Hawthorne immediately announced his retirement from Formula One. He began a series of books for children and went back to his private life at the Tourist Trophy Garage in Farnham. Author was also noted for wearing a bow tie while racing to the French. He became known as Le Papillon, the butterfly. Mike never married, but father had a son, Arnold Michael Delaunay, with Jacqueline Delaunay, whom he met in Reims after winning the French Grand Prix in 1953. He was engaged at the time of his death to the fashion model Jean Howard, who later married another racing driver, in Ireland, in 1993. On 22nd January 1959, only three months into his retirement, Hawthorne died in a car accident on the A3 Guilford bypass while driving his comprehensively modified 1958 Jaguar 3.4 litre saloon, now known as the 3.4 Mark I, VDU 881 to London. While the circumstances of the accident are well documented, the precise cause remains unknown. The accident occurred on a notoriously dangerous section of the road, the scene of 15 serious accidents, too fatal, in the previous two years. 
The road was also wet at the time. Driving at speed, one witness estimated 80 miles per hour, 140 kilometers per hour, Hawthorne overtook a Mercedes-Benz 300 SL Gullwings sports car, driven by the motor racing team manager Rob Walker. On entering a right-hand bend shortly after passing the Mercedes, Hawthorne clipped a keep-left bollard, dividing the two carriageways, causing him to lose control. The Jaguar glanced an oncoming Bedford lorry before carrying back across the eastbound carriageway sideways into a roadside tree, uprooting it. The impact caused Hawthorne fatal head injuries and propelled him onto the rear seat. There was a speculation that Hawthorne and Walker had been racing each other, fueled by Walker's persistent refusal at the coroner's inquest to estimate the speed of his own car at the time. In an interview with motor racing journalist, Yon Young and writer Eric Dymock in 1988, Walker admitted he had indeed been racing Hawthorne, but had been advised by a police officer investigating the accident to make no further mention of it, lest he incriminate himself. Possible causes of the accident include drive error, a blackout or mechanical failure, although examination of the wreck revealed no obvious fault. There is evidence that Hawthorne had recently suffered blackouts, perhaps because of kidney failure. By 1955, Hawthorne had already lost one kidney to infection and had begun suffering problems with the other. He was expected, at the time, to live only three more years. At the coroner's inquest on 26 of January, the jury returned a verdict of accidental death. Hawthorne rest in peace and was buried in West Street Cemetery in Farnham. To me, the story of Mike Hawthorne cannot be put on the table without talking about what was the Primavera Ferrari, the Ferrari's spring. An incredible period where after Juan Manuel Fangio left the prancing horse team, five young drivers were allowed to battle each other to be sure to conquer every race, every win, every podium for the Ferrari team. It was a period where also was very easy to die every Sunday on race day, even on private test or on qualifying. That was motorsport in the 50s. It was dangerous, it was crazy, it was with low safety standards, but nonetheless drivers were just asking more power, more speed, more pace, more grip to go faster and faster even if tracks were absolutely not enough safe to do so. And it's strange how Mike was the only survival of that period, because Castellotti lost his life in a private test in March 57, Alfonso de Portago died in May 57 during the Mille Miglia, Luigi Musso lost his life the year after, in 1958 at the French Grand Prix that Mike won, and few weeks later, in August 58, also his friend Peter Collins lost his life at the Nürburgring. Mike was changed. Mike was not anymore the Mike Hawthorne we all know by books or by documentaries. He was uh, said, if I had to use a simple word for a non-English mother tongue like I am, but more than said, I think that words by Romolo Tavoni, back then sporting director of Ferrari team and recently director of Autodromo Nazionale di Monza. He found uh, a well-changed Mike author, more committed to obtain a success, a victory, a title, but uh, was not anymore the Mike Hawthorne he used to know years before. Between 53 and 58, Romolo Tavoni saw Mike change, but especially after the death of his close friend, Peter Collins, he was definitely into the groove to finish as best as possible his career and go back home to live a private life. He was already struggling 
with his health, with his uh, body fit shape because of kidneys issues had previously and starting to reappear in the last months of his life. And maybe Romolo Tavoni knew very well this and uh, when was the case he said uh, okay we can blame the car and we will not tell to anyone that you are not uh, feeling well. But Mike was also fair also with this saying uh, Romolo the car is perfect it's me that is not giving back to the car what is needed. Sorry. That was Mike. Uh, an English gentleman capable to transform like many rich kids of those years into a professional racing driver arriving to win first for United Kingdom the Formula One world title. I like to think about Mike today in a sort of virtual world where uh, when he desires he can take his uh, Ferrari 1958 model run again to celebrate his world title around the circuit of Ain Diab in Morocco like you see with this F1 Challenge VB edition showing on the screen I think uh, we have been uh, lucky to be witnesses of uh, that period of Formula One and motorsport in general but for sure a famous sentence that in Italy says Cavalieri del Rischio can be translated into an English sort of uh, Knights of the Risk and uh, it's quite true I think because between the 50s the 60s and the 70s we have seen something incredible not repeatable a golden age for motorsport that will never come back. And Mike Hawthorne, I think, was one of the greatest knights of the risk. <laughs>